Hey everyone, and assalamu alaikum. I've only had my espresso machine for about a month, but you'd be surprised at how many of my followers DM'd me asking me for tips on how to pull an espresso shot. In this video, I'm gonna try to give a basic rundown that should hopefully help any beginner like myself pull an acceptable, balanced espresso shot. I used to think that all coffee is just really sour or really bitter, but then I recently learned that espresso should taste like a balance of sour, sweet, and bitter. Let's get into it. The five things that I focus on when making espresso are the dose, the grind size, distribution, brew time, and output or the yielded espresso. So first things first, there's no such thing as an espresso bean. You can technically use any roasted coffee bean to make espresso. It's just that some beans are roasted with certain parameters that result in a roasted bean, obviously, with notes and flavors that only espresso would yield. So because of that, many roasting companies label some of their beans as espresso. It's their recommendation for the best tasting result. Dialing in your espresso does require some willingness to sacrifice a little bit of your beans. I don't like to waste my beans or espresso, so the first thing I decided on when I started using my machine was the dose amount. The dose is simply the amount or weight of coffee that you put into your portafilter. My machine has a built-in grinder and is designed to hold your coffee beans in the hopper up here. And when you start the grinder, it just grinds for a specific amount of time, not weight output. So I don't really like to use it. Instead of storing my beans in the hopper, I measure them out each time I pull a shot. It's more efficient in my opinion because rather than potentially wasting grinds every time I prep a puck, I just grind until the beans in the grinder have run out. So the first accessory I recommend you get is a digital scale. The scale I have is from Amazon and it was less than $15. It's lightweight and thin in height so not only can I use it to measure the dose, but I can also put it on my drip tray underneath my cup so that I can measure my espresso as it's coming out of the machine. I'll link it down below for you so that you can take a look. So anyway, for my go-to dose, I settled on 19 grams. I've stuck with this amount ever since, and I recommend you stick to a general dose amount as well when starting out, just to make it easier for yourself. This gram amount that you settle on will depend on your machine and filter basket. Different beans do grind differently and yield different volumes. So technically, yes, the dose amount may vary depending on the bean, but I think what matters more or most is the ratio between how much coffee you pack into the filter and how much espresso comes out. Okay, after figuring out the dose, next up was figuring out a grind size for my machine. Before I even installed the hopper onto the grinder, I adjusted the setting on the inner burr of my built-in grinder to a finer setting. I adjusted from the default number six to four. The grind setting number on my machine ranges from one to 30. Adjusting the inner burr setting slightly shifts these 30 settings to be finer or coarser overall. Okay, so the first time I pulled a shot, I had the grind size set to 15, the middle setting. Again, the inner burr was set to four. This shot came out way too fast, way too watery, and yielded so much espresso. So I needed to create more pressure in the extraction. Since I wasn't gonna change the amount of coffee I put in the filter, the dose, right? I had to make the grind size much finer in order to create more pressure. So I dropped the grind size down to 10 and I pulled my second shot. This shot was still fast, but much less so than the first. And then on my third shot, I tried a grind size of seven and that shot was much, much better. 
So for the first bean that I ever used in my machine for espresso shots, a grind size of seven or six with an inner burr setting of four was a great guideline for me, a great starting point. I do recommend you refine your own shots and figure out the ideal grind size for your own machine and beans. But if you have the same machine I do, which is the Breville Barista Pro, maybe you can try out an inner burr setting of four and test your shots starting at a machine grind size of around nine or maybe eight. That way your starting point is a little closer to ideal than what I started with and hopefully you'll waste a little bit less beans and espresso in figuring out your ideal settings. Okay, on to factor three, distribution. It was really difficult and annoying for me to grind directly into my portafilter and tap, tap, tap to distribute my grinds like not even that well. A lot of the grinds would fall out and make a mess and I would just smush them in toward the center or press them down with my finger, which just packs them in some areas and not so much in the others. I've seen many beginners grind a proper dose into their basket and then because a lot of it falls out when they're trying to tap, they conclude that, oh, I need less coffee to start with and then they end up dosing too little. And I've also seen some people grind a little bit of coffee into the portafilter, they tamp lightly and then they'll grind more coffee on top of that and then tamp again and that is not good for a lot of reasons. So please don't do that. To solve this problem, I highly recommend buying what is called a dosing cup. You could alternatively get a dosing funnel instead, but there are some minute details and issues that come up with various grinders and how they spit out the grinds not so evenly. And I think a dosing cup can solve a lot of those issues. Its main function is to collect and fit your dose into the portafilter. So you would grind the coffee directly into the dosing cup and then the lip of the cup fits perfectly inside of the filter basket. You will need to know what size your portafilter basket is before ordering the dosing cup. Now the way the dosing cup solves the distribution issues that I was mentioning is that you can shake the grinds into the portafilter. Doing this will likely result in the grinds falling and settling into each crevice within the basket. Okay, technically, even with a dosing cup, grinds won't really settle properly into the very edges of the basket because the lip of the dosing cup sits there, but this is still much better in my opinion than having to press those fluffy grinds down with your fingers just to get them into the filter before you even distribute them or you tamp them. Since the dosing cup sits snugly in the portafilter, you can shake, 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 and they won't fall over the place. This is a distributor and tamper two-in-one tool. One side has a protruding angular design, which is meant to evenly spread out your coffee grinds before you tamp. This is called distributing. The weight of the tool itself and the design of the distributor along with the spinning motion, will even out the top layer of your puck. I like to spin it a lot to make sure any lopsidedness gets flattened out. And then I flip this tool over and tamp. Okay, now with tamping, you definitely wanna press hard, but not so hard that it's like an arm workout. Press hard enough to what's comfortable for you to consistently do for each shot that you prepare. If you're using a traditional tamper, like the one that comes with most machines, maybe you can press down to a certain memorized depth. I use the two-in-one tool, and so what I've done is unscrewed out the tamper side of my tool to a depth that I'm comfortable with and effectively presses my puck. Too shallow, and it won't pack it tight enough. Too deep and your machine might not even be able to push water through the puck evenly, resulting in what's called choking, I think. So don't worry too much about tamping hard enough to break the counter. Just give it a good tamp and move on. Now is a great time for me to thank those of you who are still listening and kindly request that you subscribe if you're finding my content helpful. I really appreciate the support and I hope to be able to keep making helpful content for you. Okay, so your puck is all prepped and ready to go. 
The next factor in making sure your espresso is dialed in is the extraction time. Now, to be honest, you can just stick to the default setting built into your machine if yours has one. My machine is supposedly designed to yield about 57 to 60 milliliters of espresso. I think that's roughly two ounces. So if I'm putting in 19 grams of coffee, that's my dose, remember, and the output of espresso is around 57 to 60 grams, what is the ratio of coffee to espresso? roughly one to three. Now the general guideline for coffee to espresso ratio is one to two. Remember, I'm still a beginner too. So what I do for brew time is I still use the automatic double shot setting built into my machine, but if I notice that it's brewing for too long and my yield amount has already been reached, then I press the button again to stop it. If you choose to do this, I recommend stopping one to two grams before it hits your goal because there's kind of a delay. When you tell the machine to stop, it does stop pushing water through, but whatever's already gone through the puck will still come out a little. So even after you press stop, it'll look like it's still going. You don't have to have the scale that fits under the cup on the drip tray, the thin one but it would be really helpful in nailing your shots because you can keep an eye on the brew time and the yielded output at the same time. The general guideline for brew time is 25 to 30-ish seconds, and that's supposed to include pre-infusion time. Okay, so if you don't have a thin enough scale, you'll weigh your empty cup, tear the scale, pull the shot, and then immediately after you'll weigh the cup with the espresso in it. And then you can do the math and see if your yield was too much or too little. And then you would adjust your factors accordingly when you pull your next shot. Now, if brew time and espresso weight is not enough for you to pay attention to while the shot is coming out, I also like to observe and guess what stage of the extraction my shot is at. I remember that the very beginning, like one fourth of the shot is a deep brown color. The main half of the shot is that rich, saturated, golden colored crema. And the last one fourth of the shot is a paler crema that's more thin in texture. If your shot, if your shot, <laughs> if your shot starts to look very obviously watery, you've probably let it go on too long. Okay, so those are the five things I pay attention to every time I pull a shot of espresso. The dose, the grind size, distribution, brew time, and output. Trust me, you will get the hang of this. And unless you switch between different coffee beans regularly, you might only have to figure out these factors when you're first dialing in. Although it may vary a little bit from bag to bag of the same bean, so don't be afraid to adjust your original settings. Okay, I hope that wasn't too overwhelming for you. I remember when I first got my machine, which was just like four weeks ago, a lot of what I had learned from YouTube just like flew out the door because everything felt so unfamiliar in my hands. But after pulling like four shots, I got the hang of it. And I'm sure that you will too, especially if you're enthusiastic about it. Once again, if you found this video helpful, please give it a thumbs up and subscribe for more content in the future. If you have any questions or just want to let me know your personal experience with espresso, be sure to comment below. I hope you're doing well and I'll talk to you in the next one.